It's amazing what you can accomplish when you're not engaging in countless conflicts around the globe. Not worrying about hundreds of budget cuts starting under the Bush administration when NASA was doing crucial R&D on things like drones, remote sensing, and potential Mars exploration. It's shockingly apparent that the American government miscalculated space missions, which ultimately just pushed funding for Elon Musk's and Jeff Bezos' pet projects and gave way for the Chinese space behemoth to rise on occasion. The Chang'e, six probe China's most complex robotic lunar mission to date, blasted off on a Long March 5th rocket from the Wenchang Space Launch Center in South China's Hainan Island, where space fans had gathered to watch the historic moment. The country's National Space Administration said the launch was a success. This lunar exploration project is just as exciting to follow as NASA's Mars rovers are. We bet most space enthusiasts don't even know that a Chinese rover has been exploring the far side of the moon for more than five years now. The latest journey will be the first step towards a robotic research station on the moon. It's exciting times for lunar exploration. China's space program is moving at an unprecedented pace, intending to avoid major failures while progressively advancing their capabilities. It did take them two stations and over a decade to end up with their current station, but they appear to have nailed that. Meanwhile, they've been working on new rockets, new capsules, new vehicles, robotic missions, while also being in pursuit of human spaceflight missions. The prototype for Mengzhou capsule was flown in 2020, and they are planning a lunar landing in 2030. The name Mengzhou is linked to Chinese nation's dream of landing on moon. The only reason their pace looks like lightning is because people haven't been paying attention to their steady progress, and because America's human spaceflight program has been and continues to be a huge, sloppy, expensive, and a slow mess. For every instance of something like Dragon or Cygnus and other examples of fairly efficient and timely innovation, there are examples like Orion and SLS where billions upon billions of dollars are thrown into a giant hole with very limited results. We're in a race to colonize and monopolize the moon by establishing the first major colony. The CSA is aware of it, the CCP is aware of it, NASA is aware of it, but sadly the US government doesn't seem to be. Firstly, China will have the world's most powerful space-based telescope by 2030. Meanwhile, NASA plans for something as powerful in the 2040s. Secondly, they plan to build a deep space communication and transport network as far as Jupiter. This will make use of Lagrange points, and the Earth-Moon path will be constructed before 2030. Finally, their plans for the International Lunar Research Station are becoming detailed and concrete. Once again, in advance of anything NASA is doing, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is relying on the private sector to come up with solutions as it is weighed down by the SLS political mess. This approach may beat China, but right now they have the most advanced plans in place and a definite schedule. China also has launched a full constellation of satellites for its own version of GPS, known as Beidou, which provides civilian location, navigation, and messaging services, as well as encrypted signals for use by the People's Liberation Army. In an effort to keep pace with the US, the country is fostering a commercial space sector to bring competition and innovation to launch vehicles, remote sensing, and even asteroid mining. And it aims to build its own 13,000s, satellite-strong answer to SpaceX's Starlink internet-providing satellite mega constellation. But China has also been working hard in solar system exploration, space science, and even planetary defense. It has already registered some major feats, which have provided big boosts to the scientific community. It is now building on these accomplishments with a series of major missions across the next decade. China will also lean on its sample return prowess in the much nearer future for two intriguing missions. China plans to launch the Quechiao 2 lunar relay satellite into a unique orbit around the moon in 2024. The orbit is elliptical and inclined, chosen for its stability. Quechiao 2 will spend much of its 24-hour orbital period visible to both the lunar far side and ground stations on Earth. This communications link will allow the Chang'e 6 spacecraft to attempt to land in the South Pole on the Moon's far side. The samples it aims to collect from Apollo Crater could contain material from the lunar mantle and provide insight into the history of the Moon and, in turn, the solar system. China will follow that with another sample return mission, 
Tianwen-2, this time to a near-Earth asteroid. The spacecraft is scheduled to launch in 2025 and will swing by Earth to drop off material collected from the asteroid. It will then get a gravity assist from Earth and continue on a second mission to rendezvous with the main belt comet Panstars, arriving in the 2030s. The Miyan mission would also be used to observe other targets such as protoplanetary disks, and active galactic nuclei, and a range of celestial bodies within our solar system. The project is a reflection of growing Chinese interest in the study of exoplanets. The design of the mission is being led by the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. The project, if approved following on-orbit testing, will pose numerous technical challenges surrounding formation flying and interferometry aspects of the mission. The Chinese Academy of Sciences is meanwhile assessing a pair of proposals for exoplanet-seeking space observatory missions under its Strategic Priority Program on Space Science. These are the Close By Habitable Exoplanet Survey and Earth 2.0 missions. The Close By Habitable Exoplanet Survey would use astrometry, the same technique used by ESA's Gaia Star Mapping Space Telescope, while Earth 2.0 missions would use the transit method to monitor 1.2 million dwarf stars. While the U.S. may have a clear advantage over China in many areas of space, in some measures, the differences between the two countries are more nuanced. In 2021, China attempted 55 orbital launches, four more than the U.S.'s 51. The total numbers may be similar, but the rockets carried very different payloads to orbit. The vast majority, 84% of Chinese launches, had government or military payloads intended mostly for electronic intelligence and optical imaging. Meanwhile, in the U.S., 61% of launches were for non-military, academic, or commercial use, predominantly for Earth observation or telecommunications. Space stations are another area where there are important differences hiding beneath the surface. Since the 1990s, the U.S. has worked with 14 other nations, including Russia, to operate the International Space Station. The ISS is quite large, with 16 modules, and has driven technological and scientific breakthroughs. But the ISS is now 24 years old, and participating nations are planning to retire it in 2030. The Chinese Tiangong Space Station is the new kid on the block. Construction was only completed in late 2022, and it is much smaller, with only three modules. China has built and launched all of the different parts and remains the sole operator of the station, despite having invited others to join. China is undoubtedly expanding its space capabilities, and in a report published in August 2022, the Pentagon predicted that China would surpass U.S. capabilities in space as early as 2045. A major point of difference between the U.S. and China is the nature and number of international collaborations. For decades, NASA has been fruitfully cultivating international and commercial partnerships in everything from developing specific space technologies to flying humans into space. The U.S. government has also signed 169 space data sharing agreements with 33 states and intergovernmental organizations, 129 with commercial partners, and 7 with academic institutions. China also has allies that help with space, most notably Russia, and members of the Asia-Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, including Iran, Pakistan, Thailand, and Turkey. China's collaborators are, however, fewer in number and have far less developed space capabilities. Efforts to return to the surface of the moon excellently highlight this difference in ally support and synergy. Both the U.S. and China have plans to send people to the surface of the moon and to establish lunar bases in the near future. These competing lunar aims are often cited as evidence of the space race, but they are very different in terms of partnerships and scope. In 2019, Russia and China agreed to jointly go to the moon by 2028. Russia is contributing its Luna landers and Oriole crewed orbiters, while China is improving its Chang'e robotic spacecraft. Their future International Lunar Research Station is open to all interested parties and international partners. But to date, no additional countries have committed to the Chinese and Russian effort. In contrast, since 2020, 24 nations have joined the US-led Artemis Accords. This international agreement outlines shared principles of cooperation for future space activity and, through the Artemis program, specifically aims to return people to the moon by 2025 and establish a moon base and lunar space station soon after.
In addition to the broad international participation, the Artemis program has contracted with a staggering number of private companies to develop a range of technologies, from lunar landers to lunar construction methods and more. While China may seem like the main competitor of the US in space, other countries have space capabilities and aspirations that rival those of China. India spends billions on space and plans to return to the moon, possibly with Japan, in the near future. South Korea, Israel, Japan, the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, Germany, and the European Union are also planning independent lunar missions. Japan has developed impressive technological space capabilities, including rendezvous proximity technology to send a spacecraft to an asteroid and bring samples back to Earth that rival and even surpass those of China. In the past, the space race was about who could reach the stars first and return home. Today, the goal has shifted to surviving and even thriving in the harsh environment of space. In the future, China's space program is expected to produce significant progress in interplanetary missions, sustainable lunar presence, and deep space research. Their forward-thinking strategy is demonstrated by its ambitious ambitions for lunar outposts, Mars sample return missions, and possible manned expeditions to Mars. They will surely become more significant in the global space community as it reaches these milestones, fostering innovation and advancing humankind's exploration of the last frontier. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more updates on space exploration and scientific breakthroughs. Feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.